welcome back to the Broadcast Plaza at Dell Technologies World 2022. My name's Michael, and I'm joined by these lovely two people to talk about multi-cloud. On my right, I've got Akanksha Marotra, who is our Vice President of Apex Marketing. And on Akanksha's right, I've got John Siegel, who's our Senior Vice President for Product Marketing at Dell Technologies. So multi-cloud's a big topic, right? A lot of customers are adopting multi-cloud environments. What I'd love to talk a little bit to start off with is what are the conversations we're having with those customers? What are we hearing from them when they speak to us about multi-cloud? That's a great question, Michael. I would say first and foremost, you're right, multi-cloud has been the theme, the big topic of the week. And I would say there has not been one size fits all answer when it's come to multi-cloud. And that's been clear. Customers are using multiple clouds for all different reasons. They're using hybrid cloud, they're using public clouds, they're using colo clouds, they're using edge clouds. And for good reason they're using all these clouds, right? Whether it's to take advantage of different cloud services, uh, cloud native uh, application development type of uh, Kubernetes capabilities, uh, whether it's balancing the needs of performance, um, scalability, compliance, security, all these different things that they're, they're weighing and figuring out, that's why they have this complex multi-cloud environment which uh, as Chuck alluded to earlier uh, this week and coined, multi-cloud by default. Yep. You know, and multi-cloud by default is, the, the, the behind it all is, is, is a good reason, as I mentioned, for all those reasons, but there are a lot of challenges that come along with multi-cloud by default. You know, there are challenges in terms of management consistency. Each of these different cloud environments use different tool sets. Mobility of applications and data is a challenge. How do you move applications around as needed and have that free flowing? How do you secure data and applications in all these different areas? And then of course there's inconsistent billing, month, monthly billing as well that are really hard to predict. Yeah. Uh, so so these, our customers are contending with all these issues and multi-cloud by default is something that um, we're here to help with. Yeah, I think um, just adding on to what John said, what organizations want to be able to do is leverage best read services from each of these different clouds, because yeah. each of them have are, are something that they are really, really good at, mm -hmm. and organizations and our customers want to be able to leverage that. But as they do so, do it without taking on all the complexity that comes with it. So what, yeah. they, they, what they want is a connected, a consistent, and a secure experience across all these different disparate fragmented um, clouds and um, that is what we're kind of focused on helping them with so that we can help them get from this multi-cloud by default world to a multi-cloud by design world so they can truly take advantage um, of each of the capabilities that are in there but in doing so also accelerate what they're really after you know um, accelerate productivity um, of developers within their organization or accelerate transformation of you know whatever areas that they're focused on yeah um, Let's maybe unpack that a bit more. Mm -hmm. So we've spoken a bit about the vision mm -hmm. and what we're seeing in the industry. What's Dell doing to help our customers with that? I think from a Dell perspective, a number of things. I mean, first of all, we have a portfolio of software and services to help our customers contend with this. So from a software perspective, now more than ever, we're, we're looking to bring um, our best of breed software capabilities yeah. uh, to wherever the customers are and where their data is and where their applications is. So in many cases, that's in the different cloud environments. So um, a, good, a good example of that is Project Alpine, which we announced early in January, and we'll get into a little bit more detail. Uh, but that's really about taking our, our, our storage, primary storage capabilities, uh, block, file, object, and make it available in the cloud. And we've had a lot of experience in this already. Yeah. In, in data protection, as you know, um, we, we already have data, um, over 1,500 customers running our data protection software in public clouds today. Yeah protecting over 11 exabytes of data. So this is something that we've done already and we're looking to do much more of. And then there's also the services, of course, yeah. as well, I should mention. Yeah. So there's services as well. Apex Cloud Services is something that we're trying to help our customers consume all of this in a simple way, whether it's on-prem, you know, at the edge, in the, in the cloud. Uh, and it's really the combination of the software and services together that we're trying to provide that consistent experience, that simple, agile, compliant experience for our customers. Yeah. 
think another way, in addition to software, innovating on software and services, another way that we kind of intend to achieve this vision that we just outlined is uh, by building out an ecosystem of partners. Yeah. Um, as you can imagine, nobody gets to a you know, multi-cloud by default uh, world without uh, you know, using solutions from lots of different vendors. And so no one player is going to solve this on their own. Mm -hmm. And we at Dell Technologies have a long history of collaborating with partners, both in our end user business as well as in our infrastructure business. Yeah. We have partnerships and solutions today with each of the hyperscalers. We have solutions with each of the cloud stack uh, providers. And uh, as you, um, you know, heard this week, we're extending those partnerships into um, into SaaS and other areas, and we intend to keep doing that. So building out, what we'd like to do is build out an ecosystem of partners that helps enable um, you know, this uh, vision for our uh, collective customers. Yeah. You just said that we'd announced a few things this week, and yeah. we announced a lot this week. So maybe let's talk a bit about that. Mm -hmm. What were we speaking about at you know, Monday? It feels like so long ago, but yeah. maybe you could talk about where we started. Sure. Um, we announced uh, a number of things around uh, to help our customers with cyber recovery. Um, this is an area that's a top focus um, for our customers. It's also an area of top investment. And it also happens to be an area that our customers are struggling with a shortage of skills. Yeah. Um, we at Dell Technologies actually have a lot of experience in this area. Um, over the past many years, we've deployed um, uh, nearly 2,000 walls for over 1,000 um, customers, we've done so successfully to help them recover from a ransomware type attack. Mm -hmm. And it's that expertise that we productize into a set of solutions. So we announced Apex Cyber Recovery Services. This is a um, um, on-premises managed cyber walled solution that's delivered as a service. We help customers identify um, their critical dates, uh, data and apps that need to be protected in a vault. Mm -hmm. This vault is isolated, uh, it's immutable, and it's intelligent. Um, so it automatically kind of detects if there's been an attack. Yeah. Um, if, if we determine that, we work with the customer to identify if it, in fact, is a real attack. And if so, we help them recover um, you know, from that um, sort of attack scenario. So that's an, you know, that, that was one of our announcements. Um, as, I, as we just talked about, customers don't just have data you know, in their on-premises locations, right? A lot of them have their data in the hyperscaler. So we also announced a set of cyber recovery services for um, AWS and Azure. Um, again, same idea, customers can protect their critical data in an isolated air gap vault um, in either of these two locations and then recover uh, from them, uh, from that kind of um, a vault um, in case of an attack. We added CyberSense to our offering that we have at AWS and have had with AWS, and that helps customers actually detect um, if there's been an attack and uh, recover from the last known good copy. Yeah. So I think this, this kind of suite of um, announcements um, on uh, cyber recovery kind of help reinforce the point that we just made earlier. It's like clearly in this case, we're helping them with uh, cyber recovery, not just in one location, but in multiple locations. Um, and we're doing that through, a, you know, through software and services, so. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. So it's a building on what Conscious talked about. Is we're not just helping customers better secure their data wherever it is, but we're also helping them better manage it, yeah. uh, and also really helping them generate more insights from that. And so the other announcements that we had, one was around more the management side, which was Project Alpine. Mm -hmm. uh, and Project Alpine is, again, as I mentioned earlier, a, a really uh, a big initiative for us and focus, and something that's really been resonating, by the way, this week, which is taking our block file and object services and having them run natively in the public clouds. Yeah. Uh, but it's not just about making them available in the public clouds, it's about the advanced data services that our customers can now take advantage of wherever their data is. Um, and that, that's been really resonating. And also having that consistent experience and you know, wherever that data is running. So the same tools, the same management tools to run uh, you know, storage in the public clouds can be used when managing data on-prem. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's something that's really, we, and we showed this by the way on stage, yesterday it was great. And, it was great. and really demonstrated the idea. In that particular case, we spun up a, an example of a, a block service, instance yeah. of block running in AWS for the purposes of speeding application uh, development, yeah. in this case a cloud native application, uh, in AWS using AWS's own Kubernetes stack, right, yeah. Flavor, which is AWS EKS Anywhere. Uh, <clears throat> application is tested and developed mm -hmm. in AWS 
Uh, and then when it's ready to be run, if, if the customer chooses to run it back on-prem for production, they can easily you know, move that application and the associated data and the associated metadata yeah. back on-prem. Again, using the same tools to manage it on-prem as they were in the cloud. Yeah. Uh, and so that's the consistent experience. It's, and by the way, also that mobility, again, of moving applications and data along with it as necessary is so critical to navigating this, this multi-cloud yeah. world. It's so critical, and there are even more announcements <coughs> to unpack. And what we'd recommend to everyone watching at home, wherever you are, is to go on DellTechnologies.com and check out everything that we've been speaking about this week because there's a lot more there. Thanks, John. Thanks, Akonsha. Really appreciate your time. And now we're going to go to Brittany in the Expo. I continue to make my way around the Solutions Expo floor and I've found my way in the future of work area. Now, this is the Lifecycle Services booth. Would you mind sharing a little bit more about what Lifecycle Services are, Ryan? Awesome, Brittany. I'm super excited to talk about Lifecycle Services. These are our services focused on our commercial products that span our support, deploy, and manage services. And we've been talking really excited about our Lifecycle Hub offer that we announced last week, which is focused on our warehousing and deployment expertise including reverse logistics, repair and redeploy. It's an awesome solution that we're starting to bring to our, our customers uh, on needs that they need for first, uh, first deployment, that, that new hire experience. We've all been an employee, right? And uh, it's critical that they have their devices. And also, it supports uh, when people leave. They're talking about the great resignation and, and we need to get those devices back. So the Lifecycle Hub has all those capabilities in a, in a managed service solution and, and we love to talk to people about it. So it's been a great, great week so far. How timely that, I mean, with just last week, now you get the chance to actually talk to people face to face. Have you seen a lot of traffic so far with people that are interested in learning more? Yes, we've seen a lot of traffic. We had the opportunity to have a couple of sessions uh, with a, the current customer. Uh, and, and we've seen a lot of great feedback, uh, a lot of engagement, and uh, we can't wait to keep, keep talking more about it. Awesome, well thank you so much for your time. Hopefully come, people come to see you at the Future of Work Area Lifecycle Services booth. And with that, we'll head back to the Broadcast Plaza. All right, thanks for that, Brittany. Brittany's always bringing us the latest and greatest she on the sure show is. floor. She's on top of it, huh? Absolutely. Awesome, so what do you think? What's going on? It's nice to have us, it's the first time we've all kind of coalesced at the desk today. Together today. Yeah. It's been nice. I've actually really had a lot of fun in the Solutions Expo, T trying out all of the solutions, getting hands on. You should see the line for like to win some a lot of the of prizes. Line there. Oh, yes, man. Yes, Everyone's yes. trying to get all the free <laughs> stuff right now. Just a few seconds, what about you, would you like? Uh, it's been great talking to all of our panelists, doing a couple of conversations around crypto threats and, and making sure that we have cyber, cyber security. Um, it's just something that we have to pay attention to. The world has changed and mm -hmm. Dell Technologies is ready to deal with that. Yes, we're definitely here to help people in that change. Um, and I was I was particularly impressed by Mike Lebecki, the National Geographic Explorer. Yeah. He's also yep. representative of Dell. And he we are, you know, he's using a lot of our technology and sensors to find plastics in Antarctica, yes. which is kind of a scary proposition as far as what it means to us, as far as what we need to do as humanity to clean it up, but it's just yet another example of how Dell Technologies, mm -hmm. whether it be hardware, software, can help us move forward as a planet and as people. So let's keep on moving forward with our program today. We're going to have a nice competition coming up next. I'm excited you, about you, it. Is that it? You ready? You guys <laughs> ready? Woo! Why don't you take us there? Take us there. Yes, you guys, do not go anywhere. We're heading on over to Alienware to the Quake Tourney. Let's I'm excited. go. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Cheers.